So, you want to learn how to do polynomial long division? Well, you've come to the right place, my friend. I'm Andrew, and that's what I would like to teach you. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have negative x squared minus 1 will be divided by x plus 1. First thing is I hate it in this form. I'm going to put it in long division form. Okay, take a look. Bam. So basically, what's ever on the right-hand side of your division symbol is now outside of your long division symbol. Okay, and then what's ever on the left-hand side gets plugged inside of that long division symbol. Okay, now how do we approach this? Basically, start with your divisor. Locate the term that has the highest power of x in it, which would be this. What you're going to do is then you're going to take this term and you're going to divide it into, look at your dividend, and locate the x term with the highest power, which is this. And that's what you're going to divide the x into. Okay? So you're going to take this x term, divide it into this x term. Keep in mind the sign. So do the work on the side over here. Negative x squared, that's the, that's the dividend. And your, device, your um, divisor was x. So when you do this math, it works out to be negative x, right? So plug that in, negative x, okay? Negative x, that's part of the quotient. Don't you love the terms? So do I. Now, plug in a subtraction symbol there and parentheses. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take now this term here and you're going to distribute it to each term in your divisor. Now, first do the outer. Okay, so negative x times x is going to be what? Negative x squared. And by the way, that should always work. I mean, if you did this correctly, whatever this term is should match this term at the moment, not when we take into account the negative sign, though. All right? Then take that negative x and multiply it by the positive 1, and obviously that works out to be just negative x. Okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to do your subtraction. Okay? Take this now negative term and then distribute it to each of the terms inside of your parentheses. Now notice they're all going to be double negatives, so they all become positives. What I suggest here is do not erase the negative signs, but just write the vertical line to make it positive. Okay? Now you're going to add these two together. So negative x squared and a positive x squared just cancel. And these you actually cannot, you know, you, you cannot uh, subtract them or add them to one another because this has an x and this doesn't. So what you're left with now is you're left with a positive x minus 1. Okay? You don't need the positive symbol there. If you leave it out, it's assumed to be positive, right? So the next question then is, what's the next step? And the next step turns out to be just another iteration of what we did over here. This is the new dividend. So you're going to take this x term in the divisor, and you're going to divide it by the highest powered x term in your dividend, which is the x. So this just works out to be x from the dividend divided by the x from the divisor will equal 1, which will be part of the quotient. Did I mention how much fun I have stating all these terms? And since this is a positive 1, that's why it's added, plus 1. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this plus 1, and then you're going to distribute it, basically multiply by each of those terms in your divisor. Okay? So positive 1 times x is going to be positive x. Now you might say, whoa, Andrew, you forgot something. Yes, I did. I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. First, write your subtraction symbol and your parentheses, and then start doing your division, okay? So that's going to be an x, and then positive 1 times 1 is going to be a positive 1. Cool. So now all you're going to do is you're going to take this negative term and distribute it to each of the terms inside of your parentheses, okay? So since they're all positive inside that parentheses, what we're going to anticipate happening is that they all will become now negative, okay? So it's going to be negative x, negative this, and now do the math. So Positive x minus x is just 0, right? And negative 1 minus 1 is going to be a negative 2. So this is your remainder, but it's only part of the remainder. Remember, way back when to like, you know, fifth grade math, right? Now, I'm not saying that that's as easy, but this is like the last time I, I remember seeing this stuff. Um, uh, negative 2, right? You're going to take this negative 2. Okay, so it's going to be negative 2. Then divided by now x plus 1. Okay, if you wanted to also bring this negative term up to here and then have it be an addition, that's fine too but I think it's easier to view it that way, all right? So this technically now is fully finished. This is your quotient. The reason why I don't keep continuing here is because I have no more terms. There's no zero term to bring down or anything, okay? So that technically is the uh, quotient there highlighted in green. Now, what I'm gonna do is, you could stop here, but why? Don't you wanna do more math? Why don't we check ourselves? right? Let's see if it's right. So take this, turn it into a fraction. 
So it's going to be negative x squared minus 1 divided now by x plus 1. And what that better be equal to is that better be equal to the quotient in green. Negative x plus 1 minus then 2 over x plus 1. So what do you think? Are they equal? Of course they are. Thanks for tuning in. That was a big help. I appreciate very much. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're like, what? what? Yeah, they're, they're equal, of course. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute a value here in for x, okay? Choose uh, choose one, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, choose one. If you want, choose one, okay? There's some terms you don't want to choose. You don't want to choose a negative one because if you plug in negative one here for x, this whole denominator becomes zero and then it's going to be undefined, right? So there's certain terms you don't want to choose. But I'm just going to use an x value of 1. So there's going to be negative 1 squared. Now, careful. This negative symbol is not inclusive of the square. The square is only on that x. Okay, keep that in mind. Then that's going to be minus 1 all over then 1 plus 1. And that has to now be equal to negative 1 plus 1 minus 2 over 1 plus 1. All I did was plug in 1s where there were x's. So 1 squared is going to be 1, right? And then the minus sign, so that's a negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is going to be a negative 2. And this is 1 plus 1, so that's 2. This better equal now negative 1 plus 1 minus now 2 divided by this essentially becomes 2, right? So that's a 1. <laughs> so now what do we have? So here, negative 2 over 2 is going to be a negative 1. And a positive 1 and a negative 1 will totally annihilate one another. And therefore, the only thing that's left is that negative 1. And look, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. We just checked our work. Woohoo! Thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you can, like and subscribe. Tell your friends, some of your classmates. That would be much appreciated. I'm not really sure why my voice is changing. And I uh, don't really know who I'm trying to imitate at the moment. Well, it sounds like a mix of Happy Gilmore and uh, Ben Affleck's Batman. Take care.